Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. We're still talking about how to build the fastest cardboard boat. In this video, we're going to talk about stability. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about meta center and roll stability. There's a few things that we'll uh, need to define here when we're talking about meta center. First symbol that we use is K for the keel, which is the bottom of your boat. Then B represents your center of buoyancy. G is your center of gravity. And M is the meta center. You can think of the meta center as the pivot point of a pendulum. And I'll get to explain that here in a minute. So, as you can see, all these things, when the boat is not heeled or tipped at all, they lie in a straight vertical line, such that KM, which is the distance from the keel to the meta center, is obviously KB, this little segment, plus BM, this segment. BM is defined as the inertia of the water plane area. The water plane area is this area right here, if you were to look at your boat from the top, what is the shape that is just touching the water? And we take that and divide that over the displacement, which is simply this. Now, for my example here, I'll just keep it simple. We've got a rectangular boat, looking at it from the top, the bow is up there. The inertia uh, of the water plane area, which is taken to be this rectangle, is your standard formula 1 12th bh cubed. Well, in this case, I've substituted the B's and the H's out and switched the names around a little bit to make more sense. We have length and a base which of 96 and 36. Now, one thing to notice here, the term that is perpendicular to your axis that you're measuring about is the term that is cubed. So this one has much more weight on the final say as to what the inertia is over something on this axis. And our draft is going to be 12. We do a little math. And we figure out that this, the inertia of the water plane, is 373,248. That's a huge number, which means there's a lot of resistance to rolling around your uh, long axis of your boat, which is good, because we want it to be nice and stable. Now this is in inches to the fourth, because we left everything in inches. So we simply plug that into our equation over here. Displacement uh, was 36 by 96 by 12 which is 41,472, so BM, this distance from here to here, is going to be exactly 9 inches. We've got half the piece of our puzzle here. We've got the term for BM, which is there to here. Now all we have to find is KB, from the keel to the center of buoyancy. Well, since we've got a giant rectangular prism, the center of buoyancy is easy to find. It's simply half of our draft, which our draft is 12, so this distance here must be 6. So we know that 15 inches is where our metacenter is from the keel. The metacentric height is defined as GM, which is something we don't know yet. We want to have a positive riding moment when the boat starts to heel or tip from side to side. Now this only works for small angles, but it looks like this. I've drawn this slightly exaggerated, of course, but what you've got here is the metacenter acts like the pivot on a pendulum and the center of buoyancy swings from that pendulum. For our purposes, we can consider gravity to be fixed to the boat for small angles. Now, if you really start to lean over to one side, you're obviously going to want to shift your weight to compensate. So in that case, it doesn't work. But for small angles, the center of gravity can be considered fixed to the boat. What happens when this starts to heel over, the water plane is going to change. Therefore, the center of buoyancy is going to move to the new centroid of your displaced volume. And what that in effect does is causes the center of buoyancy to swing directly under the meta center here. And what you have now is this new distance, z, that's going to cause a positive riding moment. You imagine it like this. Your center of gravity is here trying to pull down. Well, the center of buoyancy is an upward force. So you've got buoyancy over here pushing up, center of gravity pulling down, and that causes a torque that's going to right your boat back level, which is exactly what we want. If the meta center were not higher than all these three, you would not have that case. So that it's very good that our meta center in our example here is well above any of these other three letters. Basically, the higher your meta center, the more stable you're going to be. This formula here is a special case formula when you have what you call a wall-sided boat. Wall sides mean your sides are almost perpendicular to the bottom of your boat. They look like walls in a room. This only works, though, for angles about less than 10 degrees of uh, wall tilt. 
But what it says, if you can't read it, is sine of theta, which is your heel angle, sine of theta times all of this, which is gm, which is your center of gravity, to m, which we, are, we don't know yet because we don't know kg, but I'm going to show you how to get that in just a second, plus one-half b1, which is your original location of center of buoyancy, bm, which was this length here, times tangent squared of theta, which is your heel angle. That's pretty simple. This is simply a refinement over the basic gz equals gm sine theta. So this, what, this is what's going to tell you what your riding arm is going to be. And if you know then what your displacement is, you know how much buoyant force you're going to have. You know at what distance that is, so that's going to create your torque, a force at a distance. Now you can calculate how much force your boat's going to provide to right you back upright. So the only thing we don't know yet for our equation is the actual metacentric height, which is defined as g to m because we don't know kg. Well, finding kg isn't really all that tough. I'll show you a couple ways that you can do that. The only thing we have to make sure of to, for stability is that m is above all these. I'm going to show you now real quick a way to find kg. To find the vertical location of your CG, you do the same thing, except you lay down on your board in what would roughly be your seated position, and then you have a friend or somebody that you know very well uh, mark you right here at your, at your seat. And then all you do when you get up, measure the distance from there to there, and that is your CG in the vertical axis. Now, since people are axis, we're bilaterally symmetric, we're going to assume that the third axis of your CG is right down the middle of your body. So with this measurement, this measurement, and the center of your body, you know exactly where in 3D space your CG is going to be when you're seated in your boat. And you can do this for any position, of course. You just have to recalculate it any time you decide to adopt a new position. But it's quite simple to do. Uh, and this distance here is what's going to give you your KG distance. So K would be here. Um, the one thing on the K is you need to offset for any thickness of your boat that's on the bottom. If you have an inch and a half or two inch thick hull, you obviously need to offset that by two inches. But So K is here. G in this case is here. And this is the KG that we're talking about when we're talking about Metacenter. I hope this kind of helps explain things a little bit. It's not all that complicated, but stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.